Alexandra Hammer. I am a postdoctoral fellow in the music lab at Michigan State University. I am currently finishing my third year of my F32 fellowship in that lab. Tell us about the research you presented. So I presented the work that I've been working on for the past couple years on the role of liver X receptors in regulating cholesterol metabolism and uh, inflammation in the retina. And the work that I am primarily focused on is on diabetic retinopathy, but we got our inspiration to look at um, liver X receptors due to the work that's been done in dry AMD. And it's uh, been known for a couple years now that liver X receptors and the control of cholesterol and inflammation via LXRs uh, play a significant role in the progression of early uh, dry AMD. So we wanted to see if, uh, since cholesterol also plays a significant role in diabetic retinopathy, we wanted to know if LXRs were controlling this cholesterol also in the diabetic retina. And I showed evidence that in fact it is, and we found a novel mechanism to activate LXRs, and that is via SEARCH1. And we found that this uh, pathway, if you activate the pathway in animals with diabetes, others have shown the same thing in a dry AMD uh, model. If you activate this pathway, you can prevent uh, pathology. So this was very exciting because we are trying to tease apart the mechanism, the signaling mechanism between these two players in hopes of developing more therapeutic targets for patients with diabetic retinopathy and other um, vision uh, threatening complications um, using the, the knowledge that we're gaining in the lab. What are your next steps in this line of research? So currently I'm finishing my postdoc and I am going to be working on a transitional grant to uh, hopefully support my next move towards independent study. So the goal is to have my own um, research group where I focus on cholesterol metabolism and the role of um, diabetic retinopathy and other vision-related complications and how lipid dysregulation is controlling those um, pathologies. So currently I'm working on the grant and um, Hopefully by between the next uh, couple years, I can get independence and start my own research program at a university uh, setting. What role have you found that cholesterol plays in these eye diseases? So, uh, that's a good question. So we found that as the disease progresses, there's actually an increase in cholesterol. And uh, it's interesting because patients that are giving um, phenofibrates or cholesterol um, controlling drugs actually have a better outcome in their diabetic retinopathy and they have uh, improved uh, lifestyle and improved uh, disease outcomes, but we're not really sure how these drugs are working since there really wasn't a correlation between the blood levels of the lipids and the DR progression. So we're thinking that it is specific retina metabolism of the cholesterol, and that's why I'm very interested in the, in the role that the retina is playing in this um, cholesterol metabolism uh, pathways. Have you determined if the increase in lipids is a symptom of the disease? or if the increasing lipids is what causes the disease? Yes, so it's like chicken or the egg uh, question, <laughs> yeah. So we uh, know that diabetic retinopathy results of two metabolic insults. So you have the high blood sugar levels or the hyperglycemia insult, and you also have the lipid dysregulation. And this happens early on. And uh, diabetic retinopathy is obviously a complication that comes secondary to diabetes. So after you have long-term diabetes, then you'll start developing these um, retinal pathologies. So it's interesting because some patients will go on for many years with diabetes and never develop diabetic retinopathy. So we're not sure why those patients are protective. So it's not that you have cholesterol, high cholesterol levels, and then you get retinopathy. It seems that the low-grade chronic inflammation over a long span of time, about 10 years, will lead to these um, complications in the eye. But no one really knows what comes first. We're just thinking that the low-grade inflammation that you see in the retina for a long time, can, coupled with the increases in cholesterol that you get due to diabetes, that can lead to the progression of the disease. Are you looking at a drug therapy or other ways to address these findings? Yeah, so that's um, 
the main goal of all of the studies in the lab is definitely translating it to humans. There are currently two drugs available, DMHCA, which is an LXR activator, so they'll selectively activate LXR and promote cholesterol um, efflux out of the retina, which is what we want. And there's also another drug, CERT 1720, which um, activates CERT 1. And that has been shown to also, in animals, has been shown to be very protective. Uh, those are not in clinical trials, but they are commercially available. They are, um, the interesting new stuff that I'm working on though is not drug dependent. It is actually on fasting. And I've shown that if you, um, in an animal model and a cell culture model, if you fast or serum starve cells or animals, you actually increase the pathway. So you increase cholesterol metabolism and you increase, you decrease inflammation. And there's been a huge push in the field, especially with diabetes work, that intermittent fasting protects animals from diabetes. So simply by fasting for um, certain periods of, of time, you can uh, prevent the disease from developing. There's a lot of controversy, of course, with that because humans are very different than mice and we all are, are different. Um, each human is different in their lifestyle, their exercise levels, their diets. So it's um, a very interesting area, but it is promising that just by simply fasting or changing the lifestyle, you could activate these beneficial pathways that could ultimately prevent the disease from forming. As you said, everyone is different according to their lifestyle. However, have you determined a beneficial fasting window? In humans? Um, I'm not sure in humans. I know there is, I think it's a 16-hour, 18-hour, there's all different kinds of fasting um, regimens, but in mice, I know that if they they fasted them for 24 hours, which is a long time in humans, and I'm not sure how that translates to the human, but I know that in mice, um, it, mice fasted for 24 hours, even for that short amount of time, has significant upregulation of the LXR serp one pathway. But it would be interesting to see different, because I know out there there's intermittent fasting, there's calorie restrictions, and they're, they're different, uh, and there's benefits and um, side effects associated with each. So it would be interesting to do a study and see which type of regimen is best for these um, pathologies. Where can someone follow your work or find more information? Twitter is one place that I am um, active, and that is um, S. Hammer. Um, and then also on PubMed, you can uh, search all of my publications there, um, and that's Hammer Sandra. You can probably find all that stuff there. Thank you for sharing your research with us.